thousands of Syrians have lost their lives in the conflict between forces loyal to President Bashar al-Assad and fighters opposed to his rule. The Syrian government has, and has used, chemical weapons is beyond doubt. The fact that the most recent attack took place is not seriously doubted. Russia and China say no to war. So do I and most people in this country. Nearly four million Syrian refugees are victims of a conflict they have no part in. Yet they are stigmatized, unwanted, and regarded as a burden. It is sickening to see thousands of refugees drowning on the doorstep of the world's wealthiest continent. No one risks the lives of their children in this way except out of utter desperation. If we cannot end the conflict, we have an inescapable moral duty to help refugees and provide legal avenues to safety. Hello viewers, welcome to the another episode of The Facts. Today's topic is a very critical issue in the world. Yes, I'm talking about the millions of dislocated Syrian and Iraqis who are looking for a shelter anywhere in the world, including in Australia. I'm missing today Rehan Shakil, our anchor, but I've got another guest with you. I'm going to introduce you in a minute. But before I talk to this issue, I would like to talk to the people around me and let's see what they say about the particularly the Syrian asylum seekers and the response of the Australian government. Australia as a country was responsible for the whole mess. All right. When they went along with the US and the British to find the weapons of mass destruction. Iraq was a country, mm. has a border. Syria was a country, mm. has a border. Now it's a whole mess. So are you saying that all these millions of dislocated people are the outcome of the of Australia? Yeah, one of the responsible uh, or irresponsible acts came for us too, because it is proved in the British Parliament that there were lies involved in this attack. There were no weapons of mass destruction. There were lies involved. There was they were rushing to attack and destroy the country. What's your opinion on the government, Australian government response to the asylum seekers, particularly the Syrian people? Well, it's on the government announced 12,000 people. It's not that just Syria. It's just a political thing. It's, asylum seeker issues happen everywhere, in Burma, Rohingya Muslims, or the Burmese, or the Sri Lankan Hindus, or now it is uh, uh, Syria. Tomorrow it will be someone else. If we call ourselves as responsible citizens in the world, we should take pride in participating and helping them clear the mess. Well, the Australian government's response to the refugee crisis is quite disappointing compared to the action that's been taken in the rest of the world. Australia has filled up and taken 12,000 refugees, which is great. However, Australia needs to acknowledge the different ethnicity of these people that are coming to Australia. Let's hope that the diversity of all people coming to Australia is acknowledged because Australia as a multicultural society is much welcomed by the rest of the world. And Australia is a country that is well respected on its multicultural values. Just take a look at Auburn, a multicultural society which is functioning quite well and happily in Australia. It's refugees are all people who are in fear of persecution, whether they are Christian, whether they are Muslim, whether they are Jewish, they all deserve a home within Australia. Australia has has responsibilities under the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights and these responsibilities should be upheld whether a person is of a Islamic, of a Christian or of a Jewish background. That is, first of all, Australia's responsibility is to first, first of all provide a safe haven for these people. They need to feel welcomed. A lot, I've actually been disappointed by a lot of the responses of the Australian people on the internet towards these people. So we basically need to provide safety for these people because they are running from persecution. A place and a welcome in this country would be great. I, I, my, my opinion as the Australian law describes as it is at the moment, yeah. it should be a, a non-discriminatory <laughs> that uh, should have, uh, everyone has to have an uh, opportunity to come to Australia if they fulfill the criteria that the United Nations and also the Australian government already uh, described uh, in their uh, laws. But the government has to look at the, uh, I don't think you have to have a policy yeah. where it says that 
you can you can uh, discriminate uh, people according right. to the religion or faith right. or the race. Right. But what I believe is that if the government of Australia is trying to bring uh, refugees in this country, it has to be a non-discriminatory uh, policy whereby uh, they have to look the needs right. uh, who will be uh, who are need regardless of the religion or race. Parents pull their children out of school to search for work. Food becomes part of negotiations to marry off young daughters or part of negotiations to release children to fight in armed groups. The situation in the Middle East is a cancer that risks spreading and metastasizing. If things continue this way, we could see future developments being out of control, independently of our will and with increasingly dangerous global consequences. Here with me, Mr. Sayed uh, Rahmatullah Husseini Zada. He is a, a very active uh, community member. He is young, but he takes part a lot uh, of uh, interest uh, in organizing forums, particularly on asylum seekers' issue. So today, uh, welcome to the show, The Facts. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I would like to ask you, what do you uh, think um, the Australian government, Hebert government response to the uh, Syrian asylum seekers, uh, dislocated people who are looking for the safe place in the world. So what's the response of the government? The government is saying they are now announcing mm. and, uh, that they are taking 12,000 people, um, uh, asylum seekers in Australia, starting from maybe in December. Well, thank you for having me. I think, um, first of all, we need to d dissect the issue of the asylum seekers. Mm. We need to dissect what the government is doing. We need to understand when it's going to be implemented. So I'm just going to give a brief fact of what's actually happening. The government has proposed to take 12,000 refugees from Syrian um, uh, backgrounds, so people who are affected by the Syrian crisis, from different refugee UNHCR-led um, uh, run camps in Turkey, Lebanon and Jordan. And uh, this 12,000 uh, Syrian refugee, I as an Afghan uh, advocate, I applaud the government's uh, ambition, I applaud the government's uh, work and proposal to actually do this because the world needs uh, an urgent response to the refugee crisis. Here is, here is, a, here, here is the question uh, that a lot of us as advocates and a lot of us as, as refugee, people from refugee backgrounds need to ask is, who is a better refugee? If you're, if you're looking at the United Nations Convention on, on, uh, uh, on the Refugee Convention, the United Nations Refugee Convention, you see that the definition is very clear. You cannot prioritize based on race, religion, culture, or any, any other sect or uh, any other involvement. Mm. You, you have to satisfy the maxims that the U, uh, United Nations Convention actually provides. And once you satisfy that, then you are actually recognized as a refugee. The government saying that the Christians over there and the Yazidi, they are the most uh, persecuted uh, community uh, among those all dislocated people. Do you well, agree with that? And that, that's why they just want to take those people in. Well, well, no doubt that the Yazidis and the Christians and the other Muslim community, uh, uh, people from uh, minorities, other Muslim minorities, are persecuted heavily in, uh, in, uh, in Syria at the moment. I mean, uh, the, uh, the terrorism does not have a religion. Terrorists do not belong to any race, culture, religion, ethnicity. They discriminate indiscriminately, that are highly, highly disregarded in Islam. It's forbidden, it's haram, it is uh, uh, written in bold. Uh, as per se, uh, that you're not supposed to do and you're not allowed to do and you're not the person who, who has to do, uh, who can do that, who can adjudicate such an act. They're doing it, they're perpetrators and they're human rights violators and they're people who are doing a, a, a genocide, they're committing genocide. Why did Australia and the world, as, per, uh, as, as the media portrays, why did they all of a sudden respond to this refugee crisis? We do not have the refugee crisis as of today. We have had this for a while now and Australia has been having people on their shores who are being returned back for a number of years now, considerably uh, uh, you know, expedited by the Tony Abbott government, but nonetheless, we have had them for about five, six years now, and the refugee crisis has had, has happened. Now, the issue is that we have had people drown a considerable number of Afghan refugees, a considerable num number of Sri Lankan refugees, a considerable number of people who are in desperate need of a shelter drown in the seas 
of our own. And yet the media has not said anything. The people have not protested against us. All we hear on social media, all we hear on the normal mainstream media is that, you know, these people are invading our country. These people are taking our jobs. These people are economic migrants. Now, let's, let's, this comes to the point that, you know, the distinction between a migrant and a refugee is pretty clear cut. A refugee is a person who is actually forced out of their country. They have no other choice. And in the words of the high, uh, uh, you know, uh, UN High Commissioner, this is exactly what they are. They have no other choice but to flee their country. A migrant is a person, on the other hand, who wants a better life, who wants, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you have documents and long as you're allowed so to So you're saying that, that when they look into um, the asylum seekers, the government should not um, discriminate, discriminate and don't count on on their religious background exactly. or what other background. What I'll do is I'll actually quote what Tony Abbott has said. Yeah. Tony Abbott has said, and, and so has uh, the uh, foreign minister reiterated the same point, that yeah. we are going to take people from persecuted minorities. Now, if we, t if we talk about Afghanistan, it's pretty clear cut who are the persecuted minorities. But if we talk about Syria, it is not so clear cut because as I said, they are infected by a disease. They're infected by a disease. And if you talk about that disease, who it affects, it's not, the disease is not gonna yes. say, oh, you're a Christian, so I'm gonna affect you. Or oh, you're a Yazidi, so I'm gonna affect you. It affects unanimously and it affects indiscriminately. So, number one. Number two, what, I will, what, I will, what we need to look at is in Australia, uh, at a country that has been very compassionate, very yeah. welcoming to refugees. Yeah. We need to look at what we are doing wrong within our border, within our sovereign waters. What are we doing wrong? We have detention centers, detention facilities that are deteriorating, that are despicable. We have um, people incarcerated in Manus Island, people in Nauru, Afghan refugees who have no right to liberty, no right to movement, no right to work, obviously, because they're detained, no right to uh, a lawyer even. The Refugee Review Tribunal does not accept them to an extent on this. Now, you you from the uh, refugee background and you are uh, an advocate of the refugee issues. Now, how do you see that the country like Germany is not a big country if you compare with Australia? We have a huge land we have. They actually are taking 450,000, about that much, um, these Syrian refugees, while Australia announced only 12,000. Do you think that's enough? Just 34% contribution of the entire intact, uh, migration program. Uh, we mentioned before that Australia says a lot of the stuff, that a lot of the crisis that happens, in particular the Rohingya Muslims yeah. uh, and the refugees, uh, we say that Tony Abbott has stated the government's stance is and the policy is that it is a regional issue. Now let me point this out to the government, to the people, to our viewers. A refugee issue is not a, re a regional issue. It is not an issue of within a sovereign border. It is a global issue and we have to get this straight because at the moment there are 4 million Syrians who are, who are in refugee camps dispersed. There are half of the Syrian population from the statistics are now internally displaced people. Now we got to understand this, the, the, the gravity of the problem and as there is a gravity of the problem as it increases, there should support. The support should increase um, uh, proportionately. If Germany is taking 450 or odd thousand uh, refugees, Australia is setting a reasonable standard. In, uh, in although I understand that it needs to be a lot yeah. more, a yeah. lot more, it needs to increase a lot more. But I think Australia, in comparison to its annual intake, which is 13,750. Uh, refugees. Yeah. In in comparison to that, they are making a big uh, a commitment. They're making a good commitment. It's a good uh, standard at the moment. People who are from diverse background, they bring beauty to this country. This country, Australia, is not uh, is 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 vacant uh, without the the multicultural policy that we have. I think the beauty of our country is multiculturalism. The sense that we that we all 
uh, come united and we live in harmony in Australia is a blessing. And I think that in, uh, uh, in uh, you know, as, as a person who has come from refugee background myself, um, I can speak from experience that Australia definitely provides the right opportunities for people to grow, to uh, flourish, to start their own career uh, in whatever field they like and whatever field they have, they have. And they will be contributing positively to the society. So uh, this is, I think the fact show is doing a great job um, because uh, you know it shows, it gives a voice to the people who do not normally get share the screen. Dear viewers, uh, you have listened to Mr. Rahmatullah Hussain Zada. Um, he explained um, and shared his experience as well as uh, the conditions and and the the need of the uh, Australian government for the uh, refugees, particularly the Syrian uh, refugees. Australia is a signatory to the Refugee Convention 1951 and then revised. Uh, it was in 1967, and according to that, uh, with other 26 countries, that Australia should contribute to take the dislocated people in result of uh, humor torture, victimization, uh, and there are several other reasons. There could be, and if it come, if these people come under the uh, uh, status of the asylum seekers then Australia should play their part when these um, uh, human-made uh, uh, disasters happen around the world, particularly in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria, then Australia has to play its role because they are bound to the uh, International um, Refugee Convention. Today, in the last 10 or 15 years, if we go around Sydney, like 15, 20 uh, 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 kilometer radius around uh, the suburbs, um, you will find that uh, particularly uh, these refugee community and especially Afghani and Syrian and Iraqi, they have established business, they have established new businesses, new product and services and they are contributing a lot to this society and if you go furthermore on the history of this country, this country, this country is made by the people who came here, doesn't matter how they came here, as a professional migrant or as a student or as a, on a humanity ground as asylum seekers. They all contributed. And, you know, I wrote a book, um, Australia for Pakistanis, and I mentioned that uh, the people who came here, in, who were rather brought here by the English rulers in 1856 and 1860, they, uh, they brought they were brought here from northern part of Pakistan and Afghanistan and when they came here as a chameleer or as a labor, they built this uh, Australia. They actually contributed their lives building the Australian infrastructure, the, the roads, the, the railway tracks and, and today if we have the luxury of highways and, 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 and fantastic train system here, this is because of uh, you know, uh, their, their contribution. Uh, which we can see here. So the Australian government has to be generous and also at the same time the people, we people, we are very much settled here. We have responsibility when those people arrive here. We should welcome them, uh, uh, not just by talking, but practically we should help them uh, in settling down them in Australia. Thank you very much. See you until next time.